Constructivism is the idea that people are responsible in creating their own understanding of the world and using what they know based on previous experiences in the process of linking new information to these experiences. Humanism focuses on the individual as a subject and asserts that learning is a natural process that helps a person reach self-actualization. Scenarios and role modeling are important factors in humanistic learning as our experiences exploring and observing others. With these theories, we can put into perspective the ways in which one receives the world. Through ourselves, we construct a world around us. Everything we feel is through our five senses, each one influencing ways of being in the world that we may not recognize until we have finally understood where we are supposed to be. We are a collective of people who are guided through our own experiences that are made by even smaller experiences that create layers to who we are in life and the ways in which we perform. These interactions that form us begin in early education through the teaching styles of our peers, teachers, parents, environments, strangers, and furthermore, a consciousness that we have yet to catch up to. All these layers of interactions are stacked upon each other and leave marks on us to the people that we have in contact with that we carry for the rest of our lives. Who we become and who we are yet to become lays within each interaction we have with others. In the following, I'll take excerpts from authors Jacques Rancière, Marguerite Grubosks, Kathleen Stewart, Dominic Petman, Andy Merrifield, and Sarah Ahmed to further support my concept of how these theories can be combined to better understand the world around us. Jacques Rancière and the Emancipative Spectator notes, in fact, all humans will take a unique path from what they already know to what they do not know yet if given an environment where this is possible. A person will translate experience into words and then test the statements that result. Rancière states this, he's talking about spaces that are free roaming, where you find comfort and safety, and how these spaces can create freedom to experiment. The idea of translating experience into words can be first-hand experiments that have developed into strong positions we take as individual politically, for example. Testing the statements to construct an environment around an individual, and the more that statements are being produced by said individuals, the more interaction they are receiving from particular entities. In addition, Valsier states, Viewing is a routine human activity, an activity compromising of selection, comparison, interpretation, and of making connections. It is part of a process that inevitably leads to the viewer creating something of their own, even if it is a negotiation, the turning away, yawning, or choosing another path. As he says, spectators are only ever individuals plotting their own path in the forest of things, acts, and signs that confront or surround them. Page 16. We are all spectators just waiting for something to catch our eye, or spark something in it, just for us to join in. Margaret Grybowski and Will Song notes, at the same time that we know more about whales than ever, we also find ourselves grasping at the remnants of models of social life that are quickly becoming extinct. In these conditions of social impoverishment, we turn to fantastic new visuals and we return to haunting audio recordings of the most intelligent mammal, the sapiens of the seas. End quote. This is the reason we turn back to history why we recall events, and why we replicate events so often in our lives. Because we are grasping remnants of models of social life that are quickly becoming extinct. We are spectators. We watch and observe. We create links based on past experiences to new ones. We use the models of history to replicate movement and actions. We are stuck going back into the past because they are haunting images of what once was. We study unfortunate events so that we can learn how life was before. However, we hardly ever come up with new ways of moving ourselves or transforming ourselves outside of these experiences in current time, to the point that we drain ourselves of this repetitiveness. 
We do things in ways that are not as productive or as revolutionary as they were in the past. We are a new generation, but we lack societal imagination to our lives. So we seek answers from unknown territories such as sea creatures in hopes that something new will come from it, that we may feel something different that alleviates our frustrations from these repetitive ways of being. Kathleen Stewart in Ordinary Effects speaks about the effect that an ordinary affect might have. She notes, people might be touched by it or hardened to its obnoxious demands, but either way, a charge passes through the body and lingers for a little while as an irritation, confusion, judgment, thrill, and music. However, it strikes us with significant jumps. End quote. This idea ties back to humanism and these interactions construct the path to our self-actualization. When we are in positions that we as individuals feel an emotion, it is unique to ourselves. Whether we are hurt, sad, angry, happy by it, reflects past flashbacks that are rooted from our past selves, ones that suddenly come springing from our memory. Moments like this make us stop for a second and ask ourselves why we feel a type of way. Our feelings become something individual that we will sort into boxes in our head and help us move on from it or keeps us paralyzed. Our feelings help us navigate the way we are in the world physically and mentally, yet also limit us. Andrew Merrifield in The Wisdom of Donkeys talks about the idea of fleeing, stating, By the fleeing, I don't mean running away or avoiding. I mean confronting, actively fleeing from the unreality, redefining your true self, the real one. Not the one you erect for worthy appearances, or the one you're forever struggling against. By fleeing, then, I mean you're really telling yourself, no more, enough of it. It's time to let yourself be who you really are. Confrontations with ourselves, patience with ourselves, putting ourselves in the center is viable to coming to understand ourselves. Perhaps here Mary feel to say, forgive yourselves for you. Do not put that on others. Find it in yourself to know who you are and the reasons you chose this path. Take responsibility in creating your own understanding of the world. This ties back to constructivism and the ways in which we construct our identities and relations to others often. However, one of the challenges with this is stepping back from others' world and defining who we are in our own way. Responsibility for ourselves and our actions is one of the first lessons we are taught, yet we are often coddled when we are young and directed every which way that we forget that as we grow, there is no other that will carry our decisions and responsibilities, that these will ultimately lay on our own shoulders for the rest of our lives, that we are dependent on ourselves at the end of the day. Dominic Pettman and Sonic Intimacy notes that for the world as it is encountered, it is only encountered as such by a subject. Moreover, it is encountered by a subject with the pinhole lens of the individual. End quote. Here he is referring to the way that each individual has different perceptions of the world that are felt through all the senses. Individuals are constructed in ways that hold no straight lines and diverge in every which way. The contact that our ears, mouth, noses, eyes, and bodies have to objects or subjects can only ever be felt through the ways in which we have constructed our worlds. When worlds merge together, we are producing even more lines of contact and knowledge, yet we ultimately decide how we react to them. Therein lies the humanist focus on the individual, one that must touch, feel, sense, hear, taste, to make sense of everything around them a world within themselves that is constructed to fit their needs. Sarah Ahmed in Queer Phenomenology notes, I reflect on how migration involves re-inhabiting the skin, the different impressions of a new landscape, the air, the smells, the sounds, which accumulate like points to create lines, or which accumulate like lines to create new textures on the surface of the skin. Here she is recalling the experiences that grip onto her bodies morph us into becoming our experiences. The interactions we have lead us into directions that use of our senses. The decisions we make are in constant contact with these those, those objects and subjects that are around us. What is valuable 
to know it is the ways in which we are constantly inhabiting other skins through the ways in which we interact with one another. Something as simple as smell can recall a certain season or certain person that evokes an emotion that will forever be imprinted on someone. The spaces in them which walk into can determine that experience that one will have. The smells can repulse them or can bring them in. Our senses react to the world around us. And it constructs the human body, mind, and soul.